uh, but it was an unclean spirit. Uh, so I can just imagine uh, how much uncleanliness this girl was doing. Uh, you see, the Bible is really, uh, uh, it's controlled, it's, it's, it's sanctified, and it's holy. Yeah. And it says certain things uh, so that you can use your imagination uh, to think about how awful uh, a situation was. Uh, when the Bible says that she had an unclean spirit, uh, you can just think in your own mind, uh, have you ever seen anybody covered with feces? Have you ever seen anybody not only covered with feces, but probably eating their own feces, naked, and doing things that are unimaginable to their body? Yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to paint a picture here uh, where you can see the magnitude uh, how this unclean spirit uh, is controlling this individual. Uh, well, when we look at the story on today, y'all just go with me just for a minute. Uh, uh, we have this woman here uh, had this daughter. But, and the Bible says that she was a Syrophoenician or a Greek one. Yeah. And she came to Jesus for healing and deliverance. If we were to read this story in the book of St. Matthew, we would see that when she came to Jesus for the help, Jesus' disciples told him, look at this woman, just send her away. Yeah. Hallelujah. They didn't have any compassion upon her. They're looking at her because she had several strikes against her. First of all, she was a woman. Then she was a Greek or a woman that was in a non-Jewish type of woman. And then she was a Syrophoenician woman. You know, those Syrians always fought against the Jews. Hallelujah. And they gave her three strikes. Hallelujah. And they said, get her out of here. But my God, I thank God. Hallelujah. That we serve a Savior. That when the strikes are against us, he does not go with the crowd and say, get you out of here. Hallelujah. He's there to help you. He's here to deliver you. Oh my God, I just got a revelation in my own mind. Uh, if you look at even your own life uh, and you begin to think things over, uh, I'm sure you can surely say uh, that I got a testimony. Uh, but I'm glad the Lord didn't throw me and cast me away. Uh, when my mother and my father was forsaken me, uh, it was the Lord who was there. Uh, the Lord was there taking me up. Uh, if I would tell you all the things uh, that I did in my own life, uh, it would not allow me to stand before you. Uh, but God, uh, uh, if you could tell me all the things uh, that you had done in your own life, uh, you would not be in the sanctuary. Uh, but somebody would say, uh, but God, uh, but God, uh, if it had not been uh, for the Lord, where would we be if it had not been for Jesus? Where would we be? My God, and even in the text, in the book of St. Matthew, the Bible said that Jesus ignored her. Hallelujah. And then she kept on begging. The Bible says that she fell down and begins to worship him. Which really means that she fell down at his feet. Yeah. Hallelujah. She fell down at the feet of Jesus. And then she begins to call on him. Hallelujah. You see this woman. She had an issue that she wanted Jesus to help her with. So she was willing to do whatever it took to get her daughter some deliverance. You see, some people love their children so much. It doesn't matter the humiliation. It doesn't matter the background. It doesn't matter about what I've been through. My daughter needs some 
help. My child needs some help. You see, it's something about a mother's love. Uh, that really surpasses a father's love uh, in this respect. Uh, hallelujah, that a mother uh, is willing to do any and everything uh, to humble themselves uh, to get the help for their child that is needed. Uh, you see, mothers are built for sacrifice. Uh, mothers are built with an unconditional type of love. Uh, and I can't leave my brothers out there hanging. Uh, serve their children and they want to see them they want to see them in the best possible way and they themselves make sacrifices for the family, for the children to grow up and to do the things and to be all that they can be but I'm here to tell you that there's something about a mother that carried that child in a belly She would not be denied. She would not be denied because she had to go see Jesus. I told you she had three strikes against her. The other strike that was against her, that she was a Syrophoenician. She was also a pagan worshiper. My God, I feel like preaching up in here. That she was a pagan worshiper. That she worshiped idol gods. That she worshiped other gods than the true and living God. And no doubt when she begins to worship these other idol gods, she opened the gateway for her daughter to be possessed by this devil. Oh my God, I feel like preaching. You see, when you start to worship other idol gods, you open a gateway uh, that allows the devil to enter into your house. And when he comes into your house, he wants to take charge of the those that are weak. And he fell charge into her daughter and caused an unclean spirit. So just think in your own mind that this woman realized that the reason why my daughter is possessed is because I was worshiping. I was worshiping Bell. I was worshiping these idol gods. I was worshiping the god of the stars. I was worshiping the gods of the moon. I was worshiping things. Oh, she had a Jezebel spirit. She was worshiping things. My God that caused the household to be bound up by the devil. Oh, but when she came to Jesus, she begins to bow down to him. And if you go to Matthew, it tells you that she approached Jesus. She said, son of David. You see, somebody heard about Jesus. She approached him by his apostolic, his apostolic title, his messianic title, and called him the son of David. She was confessing that he is the Christ. Oh, my God. I feel the Holy Ghost. You see, when you come to Jesus, you gotta confess that He is the Lord, that He's the Lord of your life, that He is the Lord that is able to save and deliver, that He has all power, all power over the devil, all power to get you a healing. You see, if you've ever been desperate, uh, if you've ever been desperate, uh, like the 
woman in the Bible. She didn't care about her other gods. Realizing that those gods are nothing. She came to the truth. And living God. That was able to save. That was able to deliver. She came to Emmanuel. Let's take it. 